Hello, Mioni here, and welcome back to another Roots Guide for the new variant mode, Aloha Loa Island. At the end of this video, we'll be looking at the reward for doing all 12 routes, but first, let's look at these in order. First of all, then, starting from the left path. Number one is very simple. We go on the left path and do the path as normal. Way after the first boss of the dungeon, then on this path, you will actually find that Matsya wants to go fishing. At this point for this route, we tell him no, that we've got more pressing things to do. So simply go over to him, he'll have an exclamation mark above his head, and you can choose no, we must move on, basically. And then you carry on. At this point, further down the line, you will find a pack of monsters that also has a Lalafell who's actually being attacked. He has a health bar, and make sure that you do not help him for this route. He needs to basically be reduced to zero, so you can just wait until he's been pummeled by the monsters, and then he runs off. He doesn't die, he just runs off for safety, and essentially, um, you know, we, we didn't lift a finger to try and help him on this route. Then we just go up to the final area, defeat the last boss, and that is the first route complete. For route 2 then, essentially this is still the left path. Again, no fishing allowed, so say Matsya, we have to move on. Then, we actually heal the Lalafell, so we keep the Lalafell alive. You can pull the mobs off of him, taunt them off. If you're a tank, destroy those, and uh, just throw the occasional variant heal on there, and you'll be absolutely fine. Then defeat the boss, and that counts at route number 2. For the third route then, we go down the left path. This time, we let Matsya fish. This progresses time with a nice little cutscene, and then you have to give him the bait from the sand pile. This is on the right side, not to be confused with the stone pile, the sand pile here marked. We give them that. The different type of bait actually changes what type of monsters will be encountered or mechanics for that final boss. It also changes by advancing time the tide so that the path that we previously would go is enclosed. Once Matcher has fished up those monsters, you just defeat them and then you continue to the last boss and defeat it like normal to unlock that entry into your roots. For the fourth path, again we're going left, and we're letting Matsya fish again. This again triggers that cutscene, progressing time. Now we go to the stone pile, which is on the left side. This will basically have a completely different outcome of monsters, and will change the last boss slightly. This also gives us the fourth path. Now onto the middle paths, starting with number five then. Essentially we kill all of the mobs, and we don't step on the flowers to trigger the sort of water color change. So don't tread on too many flowers, you can get away with one or two, but don't tread on multiple uh, in the trash pack area. And that's pretty much it really, we just kill the mobs, we go all the way through and then we go to the boss. That's it, nothing too special about route number five, it should just be as simple as that. Now for number six, we again do go down that middle path, this time, there are two hidden paths on the left. At this location, if you go down here, there isn't actually a location on the map. If we go down this branch, you'll find these large armadillo creatures. You'll notice that on the last boss from Route 5, he actually used these. If we run near them, they get scared and sort of run away. If we then go back up the branch and we continue forward a little bit further, there is actually another side path just before the boss's room itself. If we go down this branch, you'll find two more of those armadillo creatures, those rats as some people are calling them, and if we get close, we scare those away. By scaring both of those sets of rats away, or armadillos as I'm gonna call them, then we go to the boss, defeat it, and then you will essentially um, have a completely different outcome, and that's route six. For Route 7, again, this is the middle path. This time, you'll see that partway through, there's this big circle on the floor. Where there's a treant and some caterpillars on the floor, there's a circle. 
This is actually part of a puzzle rather than the scenery. If you pull all of the monsters onto this circle and you defeat the treant first to get it out of the way, then once the treant is dead, you need to kill the caterpillars. If you kill the caterpillars within the circle, then you will actually get them uh, to basically light up this sigil. And once all of them are defeated in the correct order, as we've said, so treant and then all the caterpillars afterwards, a new path will open. This huge branch will sprawl up the tree. If we go up here, you will find a pack of monsters with some bats. We just kill those as normal. And then the second pack of monsters, just around the corner, you'll see there's actually a weird named Mikote there. That's actually a treasure hunter. If we don't hit her at all, and we just very carefully pull other monsters, she actually has a cast timer uh, that she's casting where she runs away. Essentially, just deal with the other pack of monsters first. Let her run away. Do not hit her at all. Uh, basically, a different path entirely is triggered by hitting her, so we're not going to hit her at all. Once she's decided to run away, we then go forward, and then we kill all of the monsters there. Once the monsters are killed, it basically opens up this slide path that goes back down to where the boss is, and then we defeat the boss as normal, and then you'll get Route 7. Now, for Route 8 then, the last of the middle paths, we need to kill the treant before the caterpillars on the circle once again. So kill that treant, drag the caterpillars onto the circle, kill them there. Then, this time, on that second pack of mobs on that new path that's opened past the bats, um, this time we're hitting the Miko. My advice to you would be to just go straight in there and throw a tomahawk at her face. She doesn't like this. She then gets very scared and runs away immediately. Once she runs away, you'll notice that some of the other monsters don't actually trigger. The golems don't actually trigger at all because she's not there to uh, hide behind them and mess around. So as a result of that, you just have the other monsters to kill. That's the difference about this route. Then, as usual, we slide down the grassy path to the boss. We defeat the boss and there you go, done. That's route eight. So that's the only difference is between seven and eight is hitting the Makote or not hitting the Makote with your big sword or axe or whatever you might have. For Route 9 then, starting the right path, this time we ask the fairy for secrets. So the fairy will appear halfway through this route, essentially, and uh, she'll say, hey, I can offer you these secrets. Accept these secrets, and that's pretty much it for the right path. If you accept her secrets, she teleports you inside of a room with a portal, you go down there, clear monsters as normal, and then you fight and defeat the last boss there. As simple as that. That is just the first of those paths, so path number nine. For the tenth route then, again on the right path, we are going to deny the fairy three times. So she asks you repeatedly, three times in a row, Hey, can I tempt you with this? Hey, I can tell you my secrets. Hey, hey, hey. Basically, she's being sneaky. If we say no to her three times, or the bottom option of the dialogue three times, she then refuses to help us and disappears. At this point, Matsya gets basically confused, furious, and then charges through a bunch of grass and foliage to make a new path. If you go around here, basically the fairy again will try and tempt you. There's loads of treasure chests. Do not open any of those treasure chests for this route. Once you've walked past those and none of your group has touched them, wink, wink, looking at you guys, and then go around the corner, pull the lever, and then go to that last boss, and that is route 10, essentially, is finding your own way through there and uh, defeating that last boss without the fairy's help. For the 11th route then, again, this is the right path, and we have denied the fairy once again three times in a row, so she disappears. Machia creates that route, and then this time we are touching and fighting that middle treasure chest. This spawns a bunch of mimics, we then blend those mimics down, and that's the difference, is essentially we, we accepted her gift at that point at the last moment, which changes the outcome of the route. And if we go down, pull the lever, go back down, and uh, kill the boss, then of course it will give us route 11. And then finally, for route 12, this is the one with the secret path and lots of various bits and pieces, lots of spoilerific stuff on this one. 
We're denying the fairy three times once again. Uh, so she disappears. And then Matsuya creates that hole. And then essentially just walk past the mimics at this point until you're in this room with the lever. Don't pull the lever. In fact, get people to stand back because it can mess up the routes for this. Like I got my group to stand at the doorway. And then we have ourselves a ritual to do, essentially. So the way this works is the ritual in a notebook is actually well written and you can find this yourself. But of course, if you don't want to know um, how to find the answer to this, so, based on that notebook entry where it says where Aloha Loho's deities lie in wait, one must stand before the figure of a sparrow and chant. So we stand in front of the bird, face the bird, and then type in the chat. Now it has to be like this, capital O, so O, dancer of the skies, comma, hear me, and then dot. Make sure you put the period or dot, depending on how you want to describe what that is, um, exactly like that. O in capitals, dancer of the skies, comma, hear me, dot. This will then light up the statue in front of you. It then says, you must prove your sincerity by blowing it a kiss. So we do forward slash or blow kiss towards the statue. Again, it lights up again. And then it says, after, the f uh, after that, the faithful should circle its perch, passing both the turtle and the whale, ere returning to the sagely sparrow and performing it a sprightly dance. So what we do, obviously, is we go from here and we rotate round past the turtle and then the whale and then return to the circle platform underneath the bird. And at this point we do forward slash dance, then it will secure the sparrow's favor and it will light up fully. Next then, as it says here, one must trek to where the three carven deities of Aloha Loha Isle await their subjects and there stand before the whale and chant. So we stand in front of the whale statue, which is this one, and we type in, in there again, O in capitals, O messenger from beyond the horizon, comma, hear me, dot or period once again so oh messenger from beyond the horizon hear me into chat this will light up the whale it says next they must circumnavigate the isle of the gods first passing before the sparrow and then the turtle before returning to the whale's auspice so this time we rotate and we pass the bird and then the turtle and then we return to the whale's platform here and stand on there at this point we have completed that one. Now we retrace the steps of their journey in the opposite direction. So again, we're going back around and past the sparrow second, and then all the way back and stood in front of the whale once again. And if you've done it correctly, you do forward slash dance and it should end the ritual for the whale. It's a bit convoluted, but it's quite fun. And then lastly then, it says, standing before the turtle, so stand before the last statue, one must chant in capitals O, and then lowercase, O wayfarer of the land and sea, comma, hear me, dot, or period. If you type that in with a capital O and with the correct punctuation, you will get it to light up. Okay? And then this time... It says we must journey around the Isle of Gods twice. So this is each time passing the sparrow and the whale before returning to the turtle. So we go sparrow platform, then the whale platform, and then back to the turtle. And then again, around again, back to the sparrow, and then the whale, and then back to the turtle. Once you've completed those two circuits, crossing those areas, we then slash a bow before the turtle, and this confirms that blessing. So again, all of this information is in the notebook itself. If you read the law on the actual, um, you know, from the various different parts of the book that we've given for the uh, criterion and variant mode notebook from the notes we're collecting so far for all of our routes, it is fairly easy to understand. However, this is basically how you do it. And then once you've done that, what happens next is this huge door will open in the floor. This is a big hole that your characters can jump into. At this point, Matsuya joins you and you hurl yourself into the void. Once you've gone inside there, essentially what you need to do then is continue up 
and then you will find a bunch of monsters. You will also find a treasure hunter. This treasure hunter will actually have uh, three statues on his uh, person. So what we need to do is scare him off to the point where he drops his sack. So we hit him as hard as we can and then he runs away, much like the other treasure hunters we've seen so far. Also making sure to kill the monsters. Before going any further though, make sure you check because a leather satchel will spawn on the floor and uh, that will contain the three statues. If you pick up those statues, then you are good. So essentially you've got a sparrow, a whale and a turtle statue. The way this works then, and if we go a little bit further down the path, there are these plimps and Matt here talks about them. But essentially, if you remember the order that you see these statues inside the uh, mountain range already outside, then the first of these statues to place is the sparrow. So on the first plinth, we select the bird. Then the second one, we select the whale. And then the third one, we select the turtle. If you've done those correctly, you'll be able to continue through the fog and you will find this absolutely beautiful area full of what appears to be, I mean, it reminds me of Elden Ring with the Erd tree. It's absolutely beautiful, this beautiful autumnal, bright golden tree, ancient stuff going on here. And then there's a final boss, which is basically the secret boss. It's not particularly difficult, basically it all deals with the growth mechanic with essentially making AoEs bigger if they're glowier and there's also roots that go across and the shorter the root is the quicker the AoE goes off. Very simple stuff, very simple boss, probably one of the easier ones but also one of the most beautiful. Once you've defeated that then, you'll get yourself the achievements completed and you'll earn your mount. It is an absolutely beautiful dungeon. They've done a really good job. And when Square Enix said, and Yoshi P said, that this is our first taste of what the new expansion will be like in Dawn Trail, I am super hyped. Super hyped. We all had so much fun in our group. We had a lot of fun. And uh, I intend to do more of this. It's really good. There's lots of great rewards that we'll be doing videos on very shortly. Right then, once we've done this and we go back outside, uh, we can claim our reward, of course, which is the mount. You'll find it on the achievement panel itself. Make sure you sub-command or right-click to accept it, and then you have that mount. So the mount itself looks like the following. The spectral status then. Summon Thorf, your spectral status, an avatar of the mischief-loving fairy from a lower lower island. This mischief-loving fairy was originally companion to a scholar, but Haritha refused to disperse in the wake of her master's death. After enduring a dull existence for long years, she found in you someone who could provide her with excitement, and thus did she weave an avatar of herself to join you on adventures, which is really sad, isn't it? The hidden text says, Most serious scholars consider it little more than a fairy tale, a quote there of Phyllis. This particular mount then is absolutely fantastic and it's one step closer to our dream of one day hopefully getting wings on their own as just a mount. That's something that I've got my fingers crossed for but until then this does exactly what I wanted it to do. It is absolutely beautiful of course the fairy from the actual dungeon itself the mischievous little fella is actually going to be flying us around grabbing us by the back and instead of us just slumping over like you would expect with like a claw mount or any of those sorts of mounts, we are positively floating ourselves. Almost like that pixie dust has given us all of that extra lift or fairy dust or whatever you want to call it. Magic. It's magic. A wizard did it. We look amazing. We glide along the, uh, the airways with the fairy. Yeah, the colors on this, the detailing, it is definitely a hope. Of things to come. Dawn Trail is looking more and more spicy the more I look into it. All of the panels and different things shown during the keynote at FanFest combined with this dungeon now, this variant mode, has me super salivating for the prospect of what's to come. All of the mounts, all of the different textures, the graphics update is going to change everything and I think this mount is a great example of a step in the right direction and the, you know it's such a good recollection 
of a great storyline as well. Really, really hyped to see what they come up with. The music for this then is actually the music that's been playing throughout this music. It's the Aloha Lower Island variant mode theme. Nice and chill. Almost Hawaiian, Southern Seas music. Very nice. Sokin has done a fantastic job. So unique mount music related to the dungeon it's from. And of course, all those beautiful sparkly effects. Little sound effects when you flutter from in ground mode into flight mode with a sort of like the almost magical fairy noises like the dingle noises. I don't know what you want to call them. The dingle noises. That's what we're going to go with. But yeah, absolutely fantastic. One of my favorite mounts that they've added in a very long time. I say that quite often in these videos. But I think with both this and the Criterion mount as well that we've done videos on so far, they are both top notch. I'm very much excited to show all of the other items and share those with you that I've collected so far from the Aloha Loa pot shirts and things like that. So stay tuned for those videos. Hopefully this video was helpful. Um, obviously, you know, shout out to Parabella, Lumi, Morgana, Fran and, uh, you know, myself, we, we set out and we blasted through those in one night so yes and massive thanks to the community who obviously came up with a lot of those root ideas right i mean we didn't come up with all of this on our own but uh, hopefully a visual representation in a game uh, in footage actually helped and uh, if you've got any questions feel free to leave those in the comment section and we'll do our very best to answer them much love enjoy the rest of your day and i'll see you all next time oh so good i can't wait for dawn trail even more now